We're going to do a volume check. So just speak into it. Hello? So we're good on that one. And we're good on this, kind of. Okay. I'm going to do the... Yeah, that's on. And we can move it on. We'll, should I move it up now? Test one, two, test one, yeah, yeah, okay. Let me do... Test one, two. Hey, Mike. What's up? Christine. What's up? I'm just testing it. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. Is that good? Turn it up. Who said that?
Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be here this morning and just seeing everybody. We want to first welcome those who are watching us virtually. Good morning. Welcome to our service. And now we just want to welcome everyone here. It's such a great joy to see everyone here, the choir and everyone with the bubbly faces. Are we ready to worship God? Are we ready to experience some excitement today? That's what about right. you, Pastor Dave? That's right, Pastor Faye. All right. Let's worship. So welcome, family, friends, guests, and visitors, both here in the building and those worshiping virtually. Welcome to worship. We give thanks to this community in all ways, shapes, and form. And today we continue our series on the meaning of the cross now, and then later we'll do what it means going f uh, forward. But today we're looking at justice. What does the cross mean in terms of justice? How do we have justice in a world where we're seeing violence happening all the time? Just this week there were more murders occurring just because somebody's angry and they use bullets to solve conflicts. Multiple people have said we have got to stop that and we as Christians should be the forefront of teaching people love instead of using violence. Where do we find justice in the cross with isms that still occur in this world? Where do we find justice in the cross with those struggling with housing issues or food issues? Justice is in the cross, and that's what Pastor Faye is going to talk about today. So we ask the Holy Spirit to send upon this place in all ways, shapes, and forms. No matter what's going on inside of you, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what is happening, may you put that aside and may the Holy Spirit fill you with courage, with love, with grace, and with strength to deal with whatever's going on, but most importantly, to focus on Christ, God, and the cross. So let Amen. us worship. If you're able to stand, please stand. And take out your call to worship, and we're going to share this together. Yes. Lenten travelers, when you feel the security of God's love, affirmation of God's call, and covered in God's grace. God comes near. When you feel deserted and alone, starving and parched for a caring hand or an encouraging word, troubled and uncertain as the ground under you shifts like sand, God comes near. When you feel emboldened to act, inspired to speak, energized to live as bearers of the good news that the kingdom of God is here. God comes near. In all season of our lives, God, God comes near to us and does not forsake us. We gather to come near to God, whose ever-present love remains near no matter where our journey takes us. Amen. And now with bold voices, let us sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross, number 301 in your hymnals. Let's sing nice and loud so those down the street come running in.
All right. Now we are going to pass the peace. Let us first pass the peace to those who are watching virtually. Peace be with you. Peace be peace with, with you. you. All right. Let's do. Oops. All right. I think we're going to lie. All right. Let's talk about um, the um, life of the church. I'm really loud all of a sudden. What was that? I've been loud. Can you be louder? Okay. Is that better? Jim, is that okay? Doesn't bust your eardrums? All right, life of the church. A couple of quick things is um, the three S's, our group from the trustees, we're trying to get people just to come on in and hang out with us on March 16th from 9 till noon. It's a time to come in. You come when you can, leave when you must. It's just to do some light cleaning and things around the church. Dwayne has spent time reinforcing all of the shelves in Zion Closets Hall and the... Um, ladder is now fully secure so even i could go up it without an issue um but that'll be like one project to get everything up there reorganize it um, other things within the church we need so march 16th put on your calendars nine till noon show up enjoy talk to people do a little light cleaning and some other things new members are going to join on the 10th of march if you're still interested um just get a hold of me and we can kind of talk about that although anybody know what march 10th is and if you went to first service you cannot answer Anybody know what March 10th is? Who said that? Ruth. Nice job, Ruth. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's daylight savings time. So I got to make sure I meet with all of the new members that they know they're going to lose an hour that day. That sucks. Anyway, daylight savings is still around. I'm not happy with daylight savings in case you wondered. There's my political rant for the day. What was that? I know. Uh, daylight savings, one of those things. Um, all right, a couple more announcements. I got Debbie going to come up here and share two things with us. Um, we can use the uh, mic for her. Thanks. And as Debbie's coming up here, we have some new members of the choir that's just here as guests. So thank you, Sam. And then who are the two guests today? Raise your hands. Welcome. That's a joy. That's right, you can clap it up. They both know Sam, but they're paying Sam. It's okay. It all works out in the end. <laughs> uh, good morning. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Debbie Hauser. And a few years ago, before we kind of shut everything down, I used to lead a group of ladies uh, for an exercise program. We would meet a couple times a week. Uh, with COVID, obviously, we shut that down. But I, as a support to uh, losing pounds for Jesus... 
Ta-da. Right. Ta-da. And, and notice, notice how she went to me right yeah, away. Right. She did the first service, yeah, too. Yeah. That was good how you moved your hand back as if you knew where I was standing. I that was good. So um, as a support for those folks that are doing that, I'm offering to restart that program. I've had somebody already approach me to do something like in a morning, and then I will probably do something around 5 o'clock on Wednesday evening. So if anybody is interested... I am in the directory, so you can reach out to me either through email or a phone call, or you can reach out to the office and let me know. Um, I'll probably start this Wednesday uh, between 5 and 5.30. So if anybody's interested, feel free to come on out. And then... Uh, Before your second story. So, yes, Life of the Church, the weight loss program has begun. I'm still standing here. I haven't passed out yet. We'll see how it goes. I know there's a lot of money riding on me losing a lot of weight. So we'll see what I can raise for the church. Could be a lot, it could be a little. And yes, if I gain weight, I will pay you all whatever I gain. Um, so, but it started, and so this month is going to be interesting. All right, now let's go to the next story. The second story is uh, Pilt asked me to share this because Debbie Gilman, who is one of the other of the many Debbies that is here <laughs> uh, at church, she asked, uh, he asked me to share this story. This bag, for those of you that don't know, is given out to all of our. Um, visitors as they come in for the their first visit here and Debbie had a co-worker and the co-worker's husband come and visit us I believe it was before Christmas uh, and what has happened is that particular couple has gone back to their church they were so warmed and the grace of God filled their heart they had not been in their church for 19 years they had a tragedy with one of their children and so they had kind of just gotten away from church. So Debbie feels that this little outreach that, you know, they came here and they got this bag and um, God just filled their hearts and they're now back in their own church. And um, it's just proof that God is out there. And if we just take that little extra up step, then you can really affect somebody's life. Yeah, so let's celebrate those that have been part of this ministry. There's multiple people in this church that have helped design those, pack those, figure them out, um, put stuff in them. So let's give a round of applause for that ministry. And thank you. And it shows the complete connection to God that we're all children of God. And so it brought somebody back to God. Um, doesn't matter what church, it brought somebody back. And that's kind of what our goals are, is to help people see God and connect back with God. Um, the other celebration of ministries is right behind me from 6 to midnight. We have a huge light show that's going on with some really cool Christian music. Um, Carl, who designed it, put it up. It is incredible. I saw some of it. Um, it'll keep changing throughout of Lent, um, but right now it looks incredible. So come on out. Advertise. It's on the patch. It's on um, Facebook, um, but invite people. Show up and watch that. Um, but I want to give a round of applause. There's lots of people that help make the light show happen um, and continue to make it happen. So give a round of applause to that ministry. That's an outreach ministry that we don't, don't tend to think much about. All right. Now let's sing um, another song. Pass it on, number 572. If you're able to stand, please stand. Um, let's sing nice and loud. Pass it on.
Amen. Amen. Yes. All right, let's all say that really nice and loud. Amen. Amen. And let's do it now together. Amen. Amen. There you go. We got yes. it. Yes. You can be seated, choir. You don't need to keep standing. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm here for you, Vi. <laughs> all right. At this time, we will have our joys and concerns. What joys do we have? The joys of people watching us on Facebook and live. Welcome. That's a huge joy. Jan, um, Hannah was very excited to get her varsity jacket and has been showing it off to everybody in first service and in between the two services. That's awesome. Yes, That's kudos awesome. to her. Uh, good news, Dorothy Crum is doing better. Yeah. Uh, her surgery was very good and she's coming along. Yes, yeah, I talked to her this week. She has good spirits, and she was online watching, I think, the first service. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks be to God. I have two joys this week. Uh, number one, I was able to take and purchase a 18-piece uh, manger set. Very large, very large pieces for a very reasonable price. Uh, so I was very happy to do that. I put that up in my rec room, and I'll keep that going all, all year. Oh, that's cool. The uh, second thing was I found out this week that Pico is giving people with electric cars a $50 discount every month. So I can't wait to earn an extra $600 this year. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. That's great. Yes, I'm happy to see our sopranos back in the choir. <laughs> and I was hoping we had new members and it was growing, but we're still thankful to have the guests here. That's right. That's right. Okay. It's good to see the fields here, too. I'm glad you guys are here today. Yes. Judy has one? Yes. All right. I don't see any joys on Facebook, so, um, but just people are watching, and that's a joy. I am happy that tomorrow I'll be getting my stitches out, so I won't have my little cap on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Any other joys? Okay, I have a joy. Um, as many of you know, my brother passed, and his funeral was Friday. But it was a great celebration. I got to see friends I hadn't seen since I was a child, but it was good. Very upbeat, very positive. But I just want to thank my church family here. We are all connected. We are all family. We have the same dad. Mm. So therefore, we share the same DNA. And I just want to thank all of you who have offered your condolences, whether it's by a text, a phone call, comments on Facebook, and the prayers definitely the prayers. I just felt it. So everything is good. It was a joy. And I just love you guys and thank you so much. Okay? Great joy. Any That's a joys? great joy. All right. All right. Concerns. What concerns do we have? Um, my coworker who had a breakdown a um, couple of weeks ago, is now in a psychiatric center for probably about the next month, but she's going to be getting the help that she desperately needs um, to get her back on track. And then I could do with some prayers because I'm losing pounds for Jesus, but it cost me <laughs> um, put my back out trying to cut a spaghetti squash up. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just easier to just eat the spaghetti, the real, not the fake, I know. We all have our crosses of bear, Jen. I know. I know. <laughs> Continued prayers for Rosemary Hoffman. Yeah. Uh, she's still in uh, Luther Woods yep. in the rehab section, and uh, she's very lonely. Yep. I was there yesterday. We prayed. We did communion. We prayed some more. She talked all about Austria, and then somebody else showed up to the table and started talking. So, yeah, she could definitely use some visits and prayers. Um, Karen's been in touch with us. So just prayers for that entire family. So thank you for following up. Um, Janet Amato on Facebook, um, pray for my sister Gail, who is still struggling with an infection in her eye. And we know how bad that is, so prayers for her. Prayers for our homebound that yeah. aren't able to be with us. We love you. We're thinking of you. Yeah. 
And also, um, prayers for me. I'm having a lot of tests this week. I'm expecting all good things, but I'd like prayers. I thought you meant you're getting tested because of your husband's testing you. Th that <laughs> happens every day. I know. Any other concerns? Any concerns on Facebook? Just the one that I shared. No, no other ones I can see. So just our normal concerns of this world and yeah. Oh, we got one up here. Let's not forget all those hostages that are still being held and yeah. they are being treated, I'm sure, brutally. Yeah. So please pray for them. Yep. All right. Let's go to prayer. Hear our prayer. And now let us go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so amazing, so awesome, breathtaking, earth-shaking. We give you glory, God, just because of who you are. You are the great I am, the creator of the universe, the creator of the world. You are our only source. You have heard the cries of the people, dear God, cries for healing, cries for positive um, test results, God. You know all about each situation. We cry out for those who are being held hostage, God, who are being treated unfairly, unkindly, God. We pray for the injustices, not only in this country, but all throughout the world, God. This is not your will that anyone be mistreated. God, we pray and we cry out for those who are housing challenged, who lack the very basics, God, that we take for granted. Shelter, food, clothing. God, hear the cries. People are suffering. This is your world. You created us in your image, God. So we ask for healing of the mind, the body, the soul, the spirit. We ask for your salvation for the world, God. We ask for your love, that love that surpasses all love, God. We ask for you. Yes, yeah, so oh God, in seeking you and asking you, we seek your presence, a presence that is always loving, caring, healing, and comforting, but yet a presence that's also always challenging, helping us to seek a new way, helping us to live in justice and live in love. So, oh God, let your presence descend upon this place, both here in this building and those worshiping with us virtually. But, oh God, we ask for your presence in this world for healing to occur in all ways, shapes, and forms, because you you showed us that you are the healer by becoming Jesus and letting Jesus show us how to heal, helping us to understand how to live in that healed way. So, oh God, let us together with one loud voice remember those words you taught us, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. Amen, amen, amen. So one thing I forgot to bring up in our life of the church and the joys is everyone should have a devotional. Those worshiping virtually is on Facebook and on our website. Pastor Faye created this for us, um, and it's a wonderful way to walk through Lent in a devotional way. So make sure you take one if you don't have one. And now we have the gift of music with our choir and our um, choir director and our pianist and everyone here. So let's have the gift of music yes. be here for us.
Amazing. That was awesome. Thank you all. Um, is, is it okay if the choir sits out here for the sermon part? Just because there's so many of you and it's weird to have people right next to you <laughs> to your left as you're trying to preach. So um, as they transition over in your bulletins, you will find your responsive reading and your um, scripture. So pull that out as we share the responsive reading. All right. Lord and shepherd of our journeys in the desert, we come to you during this Lenten season as servants of Jesus Christ. We remember how you liberated Moses and the Israelites. We remember also how you liberated the prophet Elijah in his journey to escape from the corrupt king. king. Now in our Lenten journey, we implore your direction your patience, and your spiritual support. As you sent your angels to care for the Israelites, to the prophet Elijah in his journey, and to Jesus during his 40 days in the desert, send them also to us in our earthly journeys. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. All right, our scripture intro. The authorship of Hebrews has been attributed to Paul. However, there are some biblical scholars who are uncertain concerning the author of this book. Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 3, speaks to our faith. Although faith is the root of our Christian tradition, it's often challenging to embrace it as the unwavering assurance of God's promise. Yet this scripture encourages us to a belief that extends beyond our physical eyes or reality. Especially in our personal lives, we struggle with the unpleasant circumstances of life. When we see the enormity of injustices in the world, we find ourselves questioning, where is God? If asked this question from an unbeliever, how would you respond? The author of Revelation is attributed to the Apostle Paul, John. Revelation 22, verses 12 through 17, is introduced as an invitation and a warning. God as the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. In essence, he is the sovereignty of all. His invitation, his love, eternal life with him is for everyone, yet the warning addresses the negative elements in the world, immorality, idolatry, injustices, etc. As the sovereign God, he will bring justice. Many may question if we will ever have justice or a world that God ordains. However, we must understand that God operates in Kairos time not ours. In essence, God's time is the right time. And so now our scripture from Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 3, we hear these ancient words. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. And then from the book of Revelations, chapter 22, 12 through 17, towards the end of the book, we hear these words, See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and adulterers and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come and let everyone who hears say, come and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. God. Oh. 
<laughs> yes, I forgot. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I was so ready for your sermon, I completely <laughs> forgot. All right, so connecting with God in reflection. So this is the plate and the cup. I'm going to just put them right here for one second. Um, and so what we want to do is um, an image. So... Um, yeah, I forgot to bring it. I'll just use this. Okay. All right. So what we have is three images here, a cross, a cup, and a plate. Take a moment and just reflect on those images. Where do you see God in the cup, the plate, and the cross? Where do you see love in those objects? Where do you see grace in the cup being offered to you and the plate being there for you? As we journey through Lent, may these images be ways to connect with God. Dear God, we thank you for these objects, the plate, the cup that invites and welcomes everyone, God. An invitation to eternal life, to eternal love with you. And we look at that cross, God, which has a multitude of um, purposes. It invites us. It shows the love you have for us. It shows the grace, the mercy. And we thank you, God for these objects, and we thank you for your love. Amen. 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 Now for the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. This month's theme is rooted in the cross now, but also recognizing that February is also Black History Month. Before I begin my sermon this morning, let us pray. Dear God, how marvelous and magnificent is your name. We give you glory and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence in our lives, God. We thank you for your love. I ask that you be with me as I deliver a word, be the very words that I utter. I ask this in the amazingly awesome name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, Pastor Dave gave a wonderful, wonderful message that focused on what does the cross mean to you? What does it mean to me? What does it mean to us personally? Today, my sermon centers on another aspect. How is justice seen on this cross? Although the cross symbolizes a multitude of things, God's love for humanity, he made us all in his image. It symbolizes grace, mercy, the empowered Holy Spirit to dwell inside of people, hope, atonement, and eternal life. Such good news. So my focus is on how justice is seen on the cross. When the cross is viewed from this perspective, I am convinced that it is first by faith that we accept this fact, that there is hope and encouragement to those experiencing injustices. Hope because of God's immense love for all of us. His word declares that his love in Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, just think on that, ponder on that. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God's love is so indescribable, incomparable. For our Lord, he gave us life and all that's good. Not because he had to or should. 
He provides for us every day, even when we neglect him and don't pray. He, God listens to our moans and our constant complaints, whether we be sinners or saints, just because he loves us. Thank you, God. His love and salvation, it can't be earned or, and we cannot, and it, and we cannot buy, regardless of how hard we may try. He gave the life of his only begotten son for all of us, but not only for the seemingly just, but also the unjust. Our Lord gave his all and is with us whenever we call. It's such a tremendous price to pay, but listen to the words that I say, all because he loves us. When I think about justice from the cross perspective, I am reminded of how Jesus' willing surrender to his will, to his, he surrendered his will to his Father's will. His willingness to die on the cross for all of humanity demonstrates that everyone is equal. This equality proves that no one should be treated in an unjust manner. In essence, the cross symbolizes justice for all, regardless of your ethnicity, your gender, your social economic status, or anything else. Jesus' death on the cross is also a Christian call for us to take up our cross regularly and choose God each day. We're to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to do what's right, because I know I need that power. I can't do it within my own strength. But we are to adhere to the word of God. We are to do good, work for justice. In all ways, we are to love as God loves. Justice as seen in the cross is about our behavior towards others. In Micah 6, 8, he says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. We must be the voice for those who seemingly are unseen and voiceless, the least of these, Psalm 82, verses 3 and 4 states that we are to defend the weak and the fatherless, uphold the cause of the poor and the, the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. This is the word of God, what he wants us to do. Recalling some of the numerous atrocities that occurred in this country a few years ago, and some are still going on. The police brutality, insurmountable violence, and insurrection increased numbers of people living in the streets. Insufficient public education funding in urban schools, and this list just continues on and on. Justice can be seen in the cross, but everyone, including me, needs to step up and do all that we can. As I witnessed so many horrific events in this country, I was compelled, inspired to pen this poem. This has been another American great disaster. It's certainly time for the devil blaster upheaval and violent unrest are running amok. This situation isn't coincidental or bad luck. Seemingly God has allowed this turmoil for a purpose, a destiny, in order that all of us join together in unity. Yes, it's time for the revolution, but one that embraces love and peace. For only agape love, God, can cause this madness to cease. The world's in a critical period of warfare. 
We can no longer be silent, complacent, and not care. Trust me, this is not your normal war. Guns, bombs, military power, these things won't work anymore. For we are in a spiritual war spearheaded by the devil. Our fight must advance to that God level, ignoring every unbeliever and naysayer, count counteracting the actions of this with faith and prayer. But remember, as it is written, faith without works is of no avail. We can't just sit home and pray and expect change to occur. Therefore, we must speak out, vote, protest in peace, or our efforts will fail. Yes, it's time for calm and unity within the revolution. However, here at St. Andrews, I am impressed and encouraged with the efforts that we are making, with our clothing storehouse, our supermarket gift cards, for those in need, and just our overall willingness to assist the needy. I can remember when Pastor Dave had a request from the congregation for whatever the need was, we were willing to step up. We volunteered. We stepped out and helped. Kudos to us, St. Andrews. So when I look at the cross, I see justice because of the faith and hope that I have in Jesus, the one who expects us to believe beyond what we can see. We are to look to the cross and realize why he sacrificed so much for us, that in him we have hope, we have deliverance, and yes, we have justice. Jesus, the righteous one, the justice creator, the equalizer, not the one on TV, the one who levels the playing field in order that all are equal. During this Black History Month, I am reminded of the black heroes and sheroes who accomplished great deeds. They looked to the cross, I'm sure many did. I believe that they were able to do what they did because of Jesus' actions, justice seen in the cross. As an African-American woman, I can make these affirmations. I'm going to wrap me in the colors of my ancestors. I'm going to envelop me in ebony, soothe and caress my soul in dignity. Going to wrap me in the fiery pride of a Malcolm X whose cool reserve no one could vex by any means necessary. See, I'm going to wrap me in that righteous, fearless Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a deep resounding voice, let freedom ring. I'm going to wrap me in the wisdom and the knowledge of Mary McLeod Bethune, who recognized that without an education and God, we're doomed. I'm going to wrap me in that bold, determined Nelson Mandela whose courage and faith brought freedom to South Africa. I'm going to wrap me in that audacious, won't be no slave, Harriet Tubman, a courageous, most incredible woman. But I'm going to wrap me in the truth of a sojourner, an outspoken, self-taught learner. Ain't I a woman? I'm going to wrap me in the words, the beat, the rhythm of a Nikki Giovanni, a sister who wrapped our pain, our beauty, our struggle in the form of poetry. But I'm going to also wrap me in the brave, I'll fight back, Black Panthers, whose defiant stand shocked this nation, created an historic sensation. I'm going to wrap me in the healing and the genius of Imhotep first great physician and architect. I'm going to wrap me in the wealth of diamonds and black gold from Africa, the cradle of civilization with a rich culture that has to be told. All history has to be told. All Asian, the indigenous people, Europeans, we all matter. 
our history is important. See, I'm going to wrap me in the luster of black, the spirit of my ancestors' history that won't be denied. I'm going to wrap me in the strength of black pride. How is justice seen in the cross? I believe that justice is seen in the cross when we do what's right in the sight of God. Every time we behave in ways that express love, encouragement, and courage. Justice is seen in that cross when we individually, collectively strive to work towards equality for all. When we believe and put effort into creating a world where every person has equal access to opportunities. In essence, justice is seen in the cross when love, when we love others as God loves us. That's the greatest command, commandment he has given us, that we love one another. Now, let us pray. Dear gracious and loving God, we thank you for your word that tells us how much we are loved by you and how at the cross not only is justice seen, but love, hope, encouragement, peace, and everlasting life with you is there also. We love you, Lord. We give you glory just because of who you are. We ask that you continue to work in us, through us, that we can be vehicles of your love and your justice. We ask all these things in the amazingly awesome name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 So two things that Pastor Faye just said. Justice in the cross is how we behave towards each other. And justice in the, is in the cross when we, live, when we love others as God has loved us. Now is a time to sit with God and figure out where is God calling in your prayers, your presence, your witness, your service, and your gifts. Those two statements that Pastor Faye made, justice is in the cross and how we behave with others, how we interact with others, and how we love others in our prayers, our presence, our witness, our service, and our gifts is a way to show that love, is a way to let this um, world see that love. So we're going to ask the ushers to come forward, and now is the time for you to ponder that relationship with God. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to return a small portion from your great abundance. We ask, dear God, that you bless those who gave. We also ask that you bless those who had the desire to give but not the resources. We also ask, God, that you will increase, enhance this offering that St. Andrews can do your will in sharing love and justice and peace. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 
Amen, amen. All right, let's uh, end this worship with singing something about leaving it there, I think. 522, is that the name of it? Oh, leave it here, leave it there. Yeah, there it is. Something about leaving it there. This is from, oh, that's right, this is from Charles Albert Tinley from Tinley Temple that is down in um, Philly. Um, and so let us sing nice and loud this tune. For the benediction my brothers and sisters in Christ you have heard the word you know what God requires of you so I encourage us all to go out there and seek justice to love one another as God has loved us amen, amen. Great Sunday, everyone. God bless. See you next week.